You guys, you guys in the brunch? Hit it, boys! Bam! What you think of that? Just played that live. It's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. We uh, we're we're technology boys. Uh, we've been talking about getting a new a new um, what do you call one of these a mixer? Just a mixer. Yeah. yeah, a nice little roadcaster mixer. And uh, we finally did it. Good for us. It's a mixer and it's a board. It's so many things. And the big thing is that you can play things off of it, which I believe is how every podcast in the world is ever recorded. And this is like. Between the microphones that we're using and this board, we are v- doing a very like Amazon.com type of podcast where it's like, hey, dummy, you want to do a podcast? Here are the things you probably think you're going to buy. That's not true. Uh, we don't have like Blue Yetis. That's true. Yeah. Blue, we, we were talking about this week. Like the Blue Yeti is is like everybody's intro microphone. Mm-hmm. And that thing fucking sucks. You know what my it's intro terrible. microphone was? What? Sure SM58, industry standard. Okay. Uh, the uh, Oh, like the like the Michael Jackson one. No, that's the SM7. Oh, okay. What's the SM58? That's the... Uh, it's it's the most common stage mic you'll see. Okay. It's, All right. You, you've used them at my place. It's just like a... Looks like a normal well, dynamic well, mic. Handheld, yeah. Hey, how come Michael Jackson used an SM7 and not an RE20? Uh, Pete. Because it's... No. He didn't. Don't make that joke, man. Why? Did you get the joke I was no, making? No, no, no. I was making all. a joke about children's ages. Oh. Hold on a second. I wish my uh, band oh, had a shit. All right. Chunked it. Yeah, wait. Hold on. Um, Gum? What are you saying about gum? That's the wrong one. You guys, you guys into gum? What are you saying about gum? <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> Who cares what kind of microphone That's Michael right. Jackson <laughs> used? Jeez, this is gonna be a cool new toy though. It's supposed to sound better and gotta have all the uh, the bells and 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 whistles. Shout out to the patrons because you kind of bought this. You did, yeah. I mean, patrons. I was thinking, as Patreon, the patrons literally keep the lights on for the podcast. We're not a we're profitable in that we make money, but we make like lights money. We make like keep the lights on money. Mm-hmm. So that truly does. I was uh, watching something the other day about. Have you ever heard of the theory of uh, relativity? One, one thousand true fans. No. It's basically like if you are a content creator, then what you need more than to have a a hit, and that can be anything. That could be a a series that catches on like a, a hot ones type thing or if it's a, a music thing better than that these days is to have 1000 people who will support you and that means like if you sell something there's a good chance they'll buy it or if you have a patreon they will be subscribed to it and the person who was talking about it a youtuber named Mary Spender who is an extremely popular youtuber was saying that sounds really easy and that sounds really attainable, but it's pretty much impossible. And she has, I think she has like a million subscribers or something like that. And I looked at her Patreon and she has like 600 patrons. Damn. And I mean, you told me about like the Twitch thing. The Twitch conversion sucks, man. Yeah. Like 130,000 Twitter followers. And like if people aren't interested, my Twitch streams may have around like 20 to 25 people. Yeah, I mean that that's so that's why I was I was like, you know what? Like you just mentioned you got over a hundred thousand Twitter followers. We have like we have a couple of thousand podcast listeners, but as far as like true supporters and everything go, and that's not to, to poo-poo anyone who follows you and doesn't buy your shit or anyone who listens to us and doesn't subscribe to the Patreon, it is pretty interesting that like the num the percentage of people who kind of ride for your thing versus Mm -hmm. consume it is maybe smaller than you would think. So sincerely, a big takeaway from it was like, have a good relationship with the people who actually do support you. And I think that we're pretty good on the Patreon. I think people would be surprised. And this is something that we've always kind of said is like our listenership is not the biggest, but we do have people that ride for brunch. And I love that. Yeah. And I feel like I know all you guys. Yeah, right. 
Like I, uh, it's comfortable. It's it's familiar. It's cozy. Yeah. It's it's uh it's a delight. I'm kind of rooting for the Steelers this season Ugh. for Kita. Ugh. Although she's like sneaky. She throws a little bit more shade at Mitch Trubisky than I'd like her to. I'm like, you know, who your last quarterback was right. Not a big Ben guy. Not a big Ben guy. Uh, okay, so we got this new toy, and uh, wait a second. Put some on your head. Your tongue would slap your brains out trying to get to it. Is that a is that a Geely? That's Christopher Walken and Geely. <laughs> I'm I'm shocked that you didn't go with the Marie Callenders. I think I might go to Marie Callenders. You gotta find that one. That Bye. one's the best. <laughs> Man, get we only have like three drops right now, but grabbing a few to just test this thing out to get them on there was an absolute blast. And it's super easy. This is sponsored by Rodecaster Pro 2. It is extremely easy to add drops to this. All you do is just take it from your computer and drag it onto the thing. It takes one second. You didn't ask me a single question when setting this thing up, so it had to be very, very simple. I didn't say fucking ye when I say ye, you say ha. <laughs> what the fuck? Remember that viral moment? No. You don't remember this viral moment? I didn't say fucking ye when I say ye, you say ha. No. You know who that is? No. It's Casey Musgraves. Is it? Yeah, she was playing a festival and she said, when I say ye, you say ha. And uh, there was just like a, a downbeat or something and they just instinctively went like, ye. And she was like, I didn't fucking say it yet. <laughs> That's so amazing. there was like merch. She's got all sorts of merch that says, I didn't say fucking ye. <laughs> That's awesome. I didn't say fucking ye when I say ye, you say ha. Huh. Uh, I ain't gonna lie, I'm getting cooked. <laughs> yes, hell yeah. <laughs> I introduced DJ to uh, I'm getting cooked last week. Yeah, like three days ago, yeah. very recently. I was stunned I'd never that heard you of it. did not know about that, but that is, it's an incredible video. I ain't I'm gonna getting, lie, I'm getting cooked. Take it for a spin. Does it? It sounds like it's like underwater. This I'm having like a headphone issue, but like it sounds mm. like it's underwater in my headphones. Oh no, this is I'm clear. Yeah. Oh damn! You can't just like I'm getting cooked. it stops it if you hit it again. Got it. Mm. You've just driven into Fuckville, and she's the mayor. That's I, I can't. That's, I couldn't hear any of that. You know what that was? No. Oh man! Put on my headphones. Listen to this one. You've just driven into Fuckville. <laughs> she's the mayor. Yeah, we should keep that one. I like that one a lot. Just outrageous laughter for that joke. <laughs> the joke was, by the way, I ended up watching the whole clip. It was, uh, here's how you know that a woman is going to win a fight. And it was when she starts to stand like this. Oh, I, God bless Dane Cook. None of his bits were grounded in reality at all or anything. He would just make something up and really commit to it. And he was like, whenever when a woman puts her leg down like this, when she gets into this stance, she locks into this stance, and then you're fucked. <laughs> and the whole audience is like, oh, you're so fucked. <laughs> I mean, that's it it sounds funny to say now because we know the truth that like yeah. Dane Cook Dane Cook's uh act wasn't really sustainable. Yeah. But like when you just are allowed to make shit up and people eat it up. It seems like you just have unlimited leash and unlimited content because you can just pull shit out of thin air and be funny forever. As long as you say it with that voice. I was watching something with Bill Burr. He was on a podcast or a show or something, and they asked that him, like, sound like Bill Burr. What? Uh, yeah. They were like, Who do you remember from like before they were big? And he said that there was just like nothing like watching Dane Cook before he hit. And the people that he was on with were like, uh, really? And he was he was like being very diplomatic and maybe he's friends with them, but he was like, dude, like whatever he was doing was unorthodox <laughs> and was not a style that people were doing. But he was like, he found a fucking thing. Oh, and yeah. that is hard to do. So, yeah, I got respect for Dan Cook, kind yeah, of. I mean, when we, he's not. We went we went into this in in depth when we did uh when we did um what's cooking. But yeah, I mean like he that man I don't have anything against that guy. Like his stuff hasn't aged well, but I thought it was funny at the time. And there's some stuff that is like still okay, but like for the most part, you can't hate a guy for like 
just catching lightning in a bottle. Oh, dude. And just being an absolute monster of the uh, of the day. I would go to Dane Cook shows and I'd be like <laughs> just cheering for him. <laughs> He would do bits that were already on albums and out. He would so he would also he would he would, play the hits. He would perform like a musician, yeah. right? He'd come out and he'd be like, "You know what's crazy about seatbelts?" And everyone'd be like, "He's doing seatbelts!" <laughs> yes. I was hoping he would play seatbelts. That's true. Like I think that I would have the same reaction, honestly, if I like if I saw Dane Cook perform like a, a classic off the the do harmful and swallow. Yeah. yeah, like I'd be like, "Oh fuck yeah, here we go." And I don't think I would have that reaction to like any other comedian where like I know one of their bits and I've already heard it and they get started on it in a live show. Mm. Uh, only Dan Cook. Shout out to the brunch Patreons for real. Y'all getting a treat this week at long last tomato fights is back. Some of you have been asking about it, really been kind of putting our feet to the fire. I blasted out a tweet from the tomato fights account today with the, yeah, I'm thinking I'm back. And I don't think anyone follows that account because I thought it was going to blow up and it got like nothing the entire day. At Tomato Fights on Twitter, we do need to get those numbers up. I think we have like around like 500 followers. So get those numbers up. Uh, we will be putting out Tomato Fights this week. Should we yeah. announce the matchup and the guest? I think that it's a this is a nice little time to do it. Yeah, See, this roadcast is going to be a problem because you are very no, I'm, I, mean, I, I, I already decided like I'm doing it a lot now because I'm figuring out how to use it. But I'm not going to th – this is going – I'm shooting my wad here. Okay. This is where it happens because I'm a consumer of radio and all those things. And I think the drops are very, very funny. And I think that playing too many drops is very funny. But it's funny because of the threat. <laughs> yeah. It's not funny because it's always happening. So it can't always happen. Correct. This episode, it's, go it's going to happen. You have free reign to press Do any you button know, you want. Like, want I, mean, like, voice? I mean, yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> what? I didn't real how do you know? Like what's what? It says it on there. Does it? No, yeah, it's just colors. Oh uh, Okay. Yeah, it's I got, got it you. on a <laughs> screen. Uh, yeah, it's super easy. I thought I was like, I'm gonna have to memorize. Okay. Lower left will be Ben Affleck. Fuck, but four of the other ones are Ben Affleck. What's that one? <laughs> I don't know. It's weird because my fucking headphones are fucked. I don't know what happened. So everything just sounds like it's a fucked up version of me underwater. So I'm very excited to listen to this episode and see what they sound like. This is actually really cute. This one is called Large Robot. And this one is called Small Robot. I bet I can assign large to me and small to you. That would be a great idea. We just do a robot episode. And there you go. Both in. Let's ride. Both in. Let's ride. Both in. Let's ride. Both in. Let's ride. Mike Dub. Let's ride. Let's ride. Let's ride. That's so stupid. I forget what we were even talking about now. I think we were talking about uh, Keenan Allen. Oh, wait. Am I cutting out? No, I'm not. I think we were talking about Keenan Allen making fun of Russell Wilson. Okay. In uh, in practice, I think you you brought that up. But yeah, for real, Tomato Fights is back. And we, yeah, you want to announce who the guest is or the matchup. We'll do all of them, but in what order? What's the most suspenseful way to do it? Uh, I'd say announce the guest first, which okay. is... The guest is Adam Jones. We will not specify which, which Adam one? Jones yeah. it is. It is a person named Adam Jones. Mm -hmm. Actually, no, I wanted to... Okay, it's Adam Jones, a uh, radio guy in Boston. He was at ESPN before. He's, he's uh, an old dear friend of mine but it dawned on me as i was preparing to do this episode i guarantee you he's never listened to brunch before Definitely not. or tomato fights or anything he probably hasn't listened to a podcast before so we can kind of if we want to like act like it's something else we can totally do that if we want to like have this really weird rapport with each other or well he at least has some idea of what tomato fights is because he was the one who requested to come on the show wasn't it yes so for him he had never seen this movie before, and one day we were having a guy's night, which meant we legitimately ordered pizza and watched Jackass, and it was the best. Hell like, yes. one of our friends came in from out of town to do this. <laughs> we just went to his place, ate some pizza, 
Got chicken fingers as well. I can't believe you weren't. You should have been there. Best. You, you would have really liked me. that. You would have really liked that. That's a really fucked up thing to do after the fact is be like, damn, I can't believe you weren't there. It was a really competitive night. We really put together <laughs> a, uh, a really good situation there. Chicken fingers, the whole nine. But we watched Jackass. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the best time I watched Jackass, though. Best time I watched Jackass was with you because... It was just all these dummies sitting around us, including a person near us who didn't know who Nicole Kidman was when they showed her thing. Oh, that's <laughs> right. Who says? Did, no, Did he said it worse than that. What did he say? I forget. He said, he said, he, I don't think he said he it said in like a, a hateful word? way. He said the B word. Really? He like, just like very casually. He was like, who's this B? And <laughs> I was like, oh my God. God. Well, I mean, the universe always finds a way to even out. Did you see the tweet this week of the guy who stood up in the middle of the theater and saluted Nicole Kidman in the AMC before the showing of whatever movie he was at? I don't like that it's reached that with the Nicole Kidman thing. I love the Nicole Kidman thing. I love the Nicole Kidman thing. I like it becoming like a meme. So I, I feel like it became a meme legitimately like one year ago. And there were people who made the shirts that said... Uh, had the whole have you seen that no oh yeah there are shirts that say the, the, the whole thing, thing. oh my I god i thought about buying it when when i first saw them but i was like oh, this is already this is gonna be too big it's already too popular well, i don't think it did get that popular it didn't get that popular and uh we do have exciting things on the horizon because she's doing a new one she already she already wrote it yes which i love that she writes it yeah that's amazing i think i think they get her in a room with like max martin's there <laughs> there's there are there's hit makers around it like uh, or like sorkin's there there's Jack Antonoff is in the corner, and he's like, yeah, that's cool, but it's just not homogenous enough. Jack Antonoff, I bet I bet we would do a great podcast if we had Jack Antonoff with us, because he probably wouldn't really do anything, but he would just, he seems just like a super supportive dude, mm -hmm. and I feel like that's why everybody likes working with him, because they're like, yo, I had the best day at the studio today, <laughs> did whatever I wanted, it was so nice. Yeah, and I mean, I, I also bet people like him just because he, like, churns out hits. Like, well, regardless his, of whether or not you like it, If his name is hits. on it. I, I, it depends on what your definition of hit is. Like, is it, People like it. People eat it up. People eat it up. I, I won't say people like it. I think that there, a lot of it is, they're like, it's a Jack Antonoff thing. I'm supposed to like it. And they're not literally thinking that, but that's what their he will get in body he is will, processing. And he will get in headlines. Like... Right. Blank works with Jack Antonoff. You want to get yeah. on the, those playlists? Yeah, That's right. how you're going That's to right. do it. Anyway, uh, so Adam the, Jones had never seen the movie Draft Day. Oh, there you go. And There's it, one, of the, one of the two. Came on the TV. Since then, I can promise you he has seen this movie. And this is a span of like two months. He's seen it at least six times because I watched it with him four times <laughs> a couple weeks ago at our fantasy football draft. It is a 60 on Rotten Tomatoes. Listeners, when you think 60, you're probably not thinking the movie with which it matches. I love this this matchup because uh, I bet most people would be shocked that Draft Day is a 60. Most people, I guess, most people who haven't seen Draft Day, there are actually probably most people that, that know of Draft Day. But like when Draft Day was about to come out, the, the trailers were fucking horrendous, and everybody was like, this is going to be the worst movie in the world. I don't even remember that. I, I didn't see I Draft do. Day, I feel like, until like two years after it came really? out. Really? I remember when like the tra they, cause they, they spammed the, the, the trailers like because it was obviously like an NFL-backed mm -hmm. production, and it was basically propaganda. So like any time during NFL Sunday, you get absolutely hammered by Draft Day trailers, and it looked awful. <laughs> They're like, how the fuck did you get... Uh, Kevin Costner in this movie. How did you get Jennifer Garner in this movie? Uh, and like, why is this movie being made? People didn't even know back then, like who Chadwick really right, was. Yeah. And I mean, it has a an outstanding cast. Right, it's stacked. Like There's Dennis some people Leary. in it that you're like Dennis Leary. Yeah, well, that figures. If he's like the third lead for a bad movie, yeah, I could see a bad movie having Dennis Leary as right. the third lead. But yeah, it's it's pretty loaded. Uh, so most people, I think, would be shocked that it would be even a sixty. And I also think that most people would be shocked that the movie on the other end is as low exactly. as a 60. And the movie on the other end is old school. So we're doing draft day versus old school. And the next episode of Tomato Fights, I'm very excited. We were out at the Olive Garden for dinner, which was lovely. That sounds awesome, Sonny. What am I, a jerk? <laughs> this is my favorite. That sounds awesome, Sonny. What am I, a jerk? You know who that is? No, because I can't hear oh, who it fuck. is. Like, I can hear, that sounds awesome. What am I in the dirt? Is that the quote? That sounds awesome, Sonny. What am I, a jerk? Okay, all right. So I was close. Mm. 
Uh, but you don't. Maybe if you heard the voice, you'd know Joe though, Pesci better. Who is it? Again, draft day is stacked. Think favorite actors. Think recent favorite actors of brunch. Uh, Danny DeVito. Better. Way better. <laughs> we haven't even mentioned Danny DeVito ever. Yeah, it's because this guy's so much better. <laughs> Who is it? Wait, hold on. That sounds awesome, Sonny. What am I, a jerk? That sounds awesome, Sonny. What am I, a jerk? I have no idea. There's a band that we both like. You've come to really like them the, the last couple of years. Damn it. Yes. It really? No. And <laughs> this actor's name rhymes with the front man's name. Is it the 1975? 1975 is the band to which I'm referring. Okay. That sounds awesome, Sonny. What am I, a jerk? Who cares? <laughs> I don't know what you're doing. I'm talking about Pat Healy, a.k.a. Uh, Jeffy. Okay. From Better Call Saul. Okay. Yeah, that he plays. Damn, that's he, a great pull. He plays Jeff, the Jaguars general manager. Really? Oh, dude, it is draft day. I'm already telling you, uh, draft day is going to be my pick for what the better movie <laughs> is between these two. But in the at the end of draft day, when it's when he's making moves, making trades, really working fast and furious, Sonny Weaver just up to his old tricks. When he fleeces the Jaguars. Yeah, that's Pat Healy oh my God. as Jeff Carson, the Jaguars GM. And the whole time, I've seen it a million times, but I'm almost expecting him to be like, come on, Jeffy. <laughs> he basically is Jeffy. He chunks it. He chunks he, it. He, in he draft chunks day. it huge time. Yeah. He trades the number six overall pick for three second rounders, which is the ultimate. Like, I'm not totally sure how the NFL draft works trade. It's like. But it's just a first rounder, fairness, and you're going to give me seems, three second rounders? In fairness, that seems almost like something good. Bill Belichick would absolutely do. Oh, he'd be so horned, and he yeah. would take he would take defensive backs <laughs> with all three of those picks, and none of them would be good. Yeah, so it's like a real mesh between Bill Belichick and uh, Don Sweeney. Oh, God, man. Jeffy's so good in this movie. Pat Healy just killing it. But, yeah, draft day. Friday, draft day versus old school 60% matchup on Rotten Tomatoes. Mm. Uh, Tomato Fights is back. I'm very excited about it. Uh, you're getting it yeah, on the they'll Patreon. Be, they'll be on the Patreon first for two weeks. Mm -hmm. And then uh, if you're not on the Patreon, you'll get it two weeks from Friday. Yeah. So appreciate everyone who is on the Patreon, supporting us, keeping them lights on. Get on there. You will get this awesome matchup. It's going to be so fun. Jones famously doesn't text or do anything with technology. He's been texting me a whole bunch about his rewatches of draft day for this episode. When I'm like, dude, I've seen you watch draft day a lot recently. You don't need like I do. I'm not doing a rewatch <laughs> for for this. I've seen draft day too many times. I did do a rewatch of old school today, though. OK, and. It's going to be an interesting conversation, the, uh, the old school discussion. Uh, speaking of keeping the lights on and football, as you know, it's fantasy football season. <laughs> that was pretty good. Good for you. <laughs> like quick on the draw. Uh, the first Sunday of NFL season is here, and DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL, is giving new customers a can't-miss offer to celebrate the return of the NFL season. Right now, new customers can bet just $5 and get $200 in free bets instantly. Who cares? <laughs> I care. That's who. that's right. Uh, and as an added bonus for week one, everyone can experience the thrill of DraftKings early win promotion. It's simple. Bet on an NFL team to win. And if your team leads by 10 at any point during the game, you get paid instantly, even if your team loses. Wow. I love that. Uh, download the DraftKings Sportsbook app. Uh, sportsbook app now and use the promo code wash to get two hundred dollars and free bets instantly when you place a five dollar bet this sunday that's code washed only at DraftKings sportsbook an official sports betting partner of the nfl minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply see show notes for details is suckmydick.com hell yes i meant to use that during the patreon talk to say patreon.com slash listen to brunch is suck my dick .com. 
Did you see that Ben Affleck uh, is in the news? <laughs> ben Affleck is in the news this week. Wow. <laughs> because he used a quote from one of his own movies in his wedding speech with uh, Jennifer Lopez, now Jennifer Affleck. No, but I love that. Did he use his DVD commentary of <laughs> Armageddon? I wanted to do a, a segment where we just rank the because I didn't see what quote he used. I just saw the headline. What do we want it to be? Yeah, like ranking the best posse. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Who ranking <laughs> <laughs> that one fucks me up <laughs> it's the, the it's giant dumb. laugh at yeah. interrupting it uh yeah you i know wanted why to do it is though what you know why it's because he's picking up the, the chair, chair yeah. and then throwing it against the wall uh i wanted to do a segment which we just rank the funniest possibilities of ben affleck lines to use in his own wedding speech but that would be an impossible segment because there's just so many fucking cringeworthy and awful ben affleck quotes i go I go uh, get it through your head. Get it through your fucking head. Yeah, but you got to say it in like the right way. It's not going to be you and me and Shine playing house up there. Get that through your fucking head. And <laughs> Jennifer Lopez is like, oh, my God. Weird <laughs> vibes. <laughs> ben. <laughs> but it would be it would be fitting in that context because it wouldn't be him, her, and Shy. Or it would just be yeah, him and her. Yeah. And his like eight year olds who he lets drive rental cars. Vroom, vroom, vroom. Yeah, we do. Do we have any car sound effects? I don't think we do. No, it's just... <laughs> that's what your car sounds like now. That you, is. You have to get a new car. People know about my car situation. I don't think so. It sucks. Just long story short, my fucking car died, and getting a car right now is insane and terrible. I famously don't care about cars at all, but I still haven't been able to get one because. It's the worst. So you care about money. You don't care I, about cars. You care about money. I care bit. about. I, I don't really care about money either. Yeah, I you, care, care, you care about have. You care about saving your money so that you can spend it on dumb shit. On on things other than cars, yes. right? I would, uh, dude. The list of things on which I would rather spend money than cars is crazy high. Which is why one of the things that I care about, for environmental sake, also, but I want a hybrid because I'm like, I don't want to go get gas. That's a whole thing. I'm not trying to do that. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, anyway, I, I, I'm not doing a what was me thing, but uh, anybody who has needed to get a car the last few months or year, I guess, is probably aware of this. I think I'm just going to lock into... Well, do it. I'm either going to lock into the cheapest lease I can find or the cheapest lease on, like... A particularly wait why would you have that car <laughs> car i can find i i really like the idea of uh focusing your search on the most impractical car that you can find dude i would get a sturroed car right now if they a were what? like you could get oh, a sturroed a, car? Like a car that has been sturroed <laughs> you should see what the what the going rate on fucked up u-hauls are i'm sure it's crazy there's a chip shortage you hear about this <laughs> What do you think they do with those fucked up U-Hauls? Honestly, just like right now, they would probably sell it to me for $35,000. Yeah, That's what they, they would do. Yeah, probably. And I would be like, there's a car for $35,000? Are you fucking kidding me? That sounds incredible. Yeah, I tried to buy a new car like uh, a couple months ago, and it, I tried to get like a, a, a Bronco, and it was like, oh, you got to wait a year and a half. Dude, so I'm using a car broker, too, and... Uh, that's where you get a car and then at the end you're like ah could i be broker i and i told him he was like what kind of car is thinking i was like literally anything don't care and then i texted him a couple minutes later and i was like you know what i don't hate this type of car and he immediately said the wait for that is at least a year yeah the bronco is like a fucking year and i was pissed crazy Probably man. i'll never get one uh, a little bit of housekeeping. We are both going to be at Idle Hands on oh, Saturday. Oh, right, right. Oh, okay. You're reaching for something here. No, I was checking the time. <laughs> I do like the threat, though, when either of us are talking. We just, I'm just like, oh, fuck. Again, though, like, so we've gotten to the point, though, where playing a lot of drops has presented the threat of a drop. It's true. Uh, we're going to be at Idle Hands on Saturday. They're doing the Oktoberfest. <laughs> I'm fucking shot. You got to move your hand away from the roadcaster to let me speak. Uh, we're going to be at Idle Hands on Saturday afternoon, uh, the Oktoberfest uh, event there. I've never done it. You've done it many a times. That's where you famously tore oh, your ACL on, yeah. uh, in the dunk tank. You'll be back in the dunk tank on Saturday, as will I. My first time dunk tank debut. I'm very excited about it. We'll be there uh, Saturday afternoon after Texas beats Alabama. That's right. At noon. Both fam. 
And uh, if you if you're around Medford, <laughs> Malden, Malden. If you're around the Malden area, uh, feel geographically free to stop and by. alphabetically very close. Yeah, who cares? Yeah. I don't know why. I just like that one. It's a pretty good one. That one's already on there. It's wide use. Uh, wide use of of. <laughs> I, I, I don't know how to make it stop. Yeah. So if you're in the Malden area, uh, stop by Idlehands. Get some really good beer. Watch DJ possibly rip his knee to die shreds again, and watch me uh, potentially die in a uh, and drown in a four foot tank. We do have the best time slots not to brag we do we are like headlining not headlining uh we are like we are the sunset uh music festival lineup no so i'm uh i'm closing the first set and you're then there's two at the end and you're the first of two but it's right after stein hoisting stein hoisting yeah that is when people like I, I think that you legitimately have the best slot of the whole time okay. because pe- like vibes are at an absolute high coming off of Stein hoisting. Okay, and if you win the Stein hoisting thing, I didn't think of this, and then you go in the tank after. Oh man, it's gonna be that, like that would be scary though because from what I've gathered uh, from Intel, there's a guy who wins the Stein yeah. hoisting contest every single year, and I would be a first time participant. You think that I have a. A non-zero chance to win. Because I think you have a 100% chance to win. So if I win the Stein Hoisting contest, if I show up first day on the job and fuck up this guy's life. Johnny come lately, parachuting in. <laughs> this guy lives for Stein Hoisting, it sounds like. Every single year he marks it on his calendar. He's like, cool, I'm going to be champ again this year. If I fuck up his life and then I immediately get in the dunk tank, that guy is going to be angry yeah and like dunking me until i drown yeah exactly so if you win and they they, they that this guy takes it so seriously he he changed his name to bill bill stein bill nye the stein the stein hoisting guy <laughs> don't do that that stunk <laughs> That one's pretty good. I don't know that what we goes used. too long for chimes. That's like, yeah, but that's a great transition. Yeah. Uh, not that there, we're transitioning because we're staying on this you guys, topic. You guys into gum? What are you saying about gum? <laughs> it's good to have drops where the person has like a false start too. Gum? You guys, you guys into gum? What are you saying <laughs> about gum? Uh, speaking of things that fuck up your knees, I had a discussion on, uh, the other podcast that I do, the Carabas podcast. Ah. Uh, we were talking about stairs, uh, over the weekend. The baseball podcast. So you were talking about Matt Stairs. Yes, that's an right. Outfielder. Incredible designated hitter. Yeah. Is Matt Stairs, did he RIP? Whoa. I, now that you've put the thought in my mind, maybe. I don't. There's a 50-50 chance he did. That's true. I know Chris Long's podcast does a, a segment where like dead or alive. Dead or alive, nice. Yeah, I don't. I, I'd be disappointed if Matt Stairs was dead, but I. Chris Long's gonna enter the equation at some point. Yeah. Uh, no, uh, Matt Stairs very much alive. Sorry about that. Matt he Stairs. did. Are you thinking he got in a, a scary collision on the field, like twenty years ago? Yeah. Oh, okay. Famously, well, I was at I, that game. I hope he's doing okay. <laughs> and longer than twenty years ago. Uh, this was like. Maybe like 30 years ago. Famously, I was there. Okay. When did, Siri, when did Matt Stairs collide with, who would it have been with? I don't know. Maybe like Troy O'Leary was in the mix or something? He played a lot of baseball. Carter Buford there? It was when he was playing for the Boston Red Sox, the local nine. This is a Boston-based podcast. Check us out at Idle Hands in Malden, (laughs) Massachusetts on Saturday. Yeah, but so anyway, you were talking about Matt Stairs and what happened. Talking about stairs and uh, got in a big fight because I had said that uh, going downstairs was harder than going upstairs. And I stand by that take. Um, Did you get blowback on this? Yes. All right, so my initial inclination is to agree with that. But if you got blowback on it, I have to quickly decide what's more likely that you were right or that, who is it, Jared? The entire rest of the podcast. Tyler Milliken. Yeah. I trust Tyler Milliken with my life. You shouldn't do that. But you no, know at face value, this you said going downstairs 
is worse. It's yeah, it's worse. Like worse on like I your said, knees. I, yeah, I said it's I said it's harder to go downstairs than go upstairs. Okay, I'm wondering if these there was a boys little bit of a disconnect. Because done either a leg day. Jared's or never done spin a leg day. Oh right, famously <laughs> or spin class. I don't because think so. if you've got anything going on with your legs, I would rather go upstairs ten. I would rather walk up ten million steps yes. than walk down five. Exactly. Okay. I. J- I we don't have to get into it because I got into it on that podcast, but like they were stunned that uh, the idea that I could possibly think going downstairs was difficult. G- downstairs takes a fucking beating on your legs. And like after a leg day, yeah, which not to brag, best check, shape of your sh- life. Check these out. Yeah. Looking pretty good. Uh, when I go downstairs, it fucking kills. And suckmydick.com. <laughs> check these out. <laughs> 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 Zoom in, Spike. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I just wanted to get your thoughts on that. But thank you, you're on the right side of history. Well, that sucks. I, I know. W- I was hoping for like maybe the, a fight. There, there could have been more juice there. There could have been more spice there. No, we, I, we I, got we got the fight on the other podcast, so it's fine. I'm one. You know, I'm wondering if I'm missing. Th- I th- I th- I'm pretty sure. Like, we got like a doctor or something. I had a lot of doctors responding, be like, "You are correct." And by a lot, I had like one or two, and who who just said that they were doctors and this was on, on the tw- internet was this on twitter <laughs> yeah it's definitely a doctor <laughs> for sure famously I had plenty of doctors and people who like said that they were studying medicine so hey i got this question what's with jason sudeikis because he can't help but surround himself with horrible bosses are you talking about uh talking olivia about his Wilde? ex-wife <laughs> olivia wilde what kind of ship are you running pal uh absolutely wanted to talk about don't worry darling i can't remember a what do we want to call it? A junket, a press tour, a, a promotional campaign? I don't think they're doing their press tour yet. Yeah, they are. Their press tour yet. Yeah, they are. Because, I mean, the, the, the recent oh, yeah, no, thing no, that she, just yeah, happened. She did the Vanity Fair thing, right. Uh, and the thing that just happened, was that the Vanity Fair thing, the, uh, the Harry Styles spitting incident? No, that was the Venice, Venice Film, Film Festival. Festival. Yeah. So, like, they're, they're debuting the movie and everything. I don't know if they're... They're definitely not, because we'd be getting flooded with this. Um, they're not doing, like, the junket stuff and everything i think though that florence Pugh has already said she's not doing any of that anyway okay so she does not <laughs> i mean playing there's, at all. there's so there's so much shit like there's there's shit every week about this movie and like the controversy that it has elicited from like not 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 from material like not from subject material just from the people involved yeah and like how much they hate each other apparently so there was like florence Pugh. Uh, had a little bit of a falling out with Olivia Wilde. Correct. Uh, Florence Pugh also reportedly really disliked Shia LaBeouf. Yep. Uh, who uh, exited the film uh, de- de- for unknown reasons, depending on who you want to believe, because Shia LaBeouf said that he quit and uh, he brought receipts. Yes. I mean, you know, it, it he- seems pretty clear, unless Shia is fudging the timeline. Yeah. It seems that officially he's the one that. He quit because he was not allowed. Uh, he said proper, there, there the, was, the actors were not allowed proper time to rehearse for the role. And Olivia Wilde said that she wanted to protect her cast. So I don't know what that means. Was that he means. like, get me in a room with with Florence Pugh? I need to scream at her for <laughs> like two hours or something. Uh, I don't know when this movie was made, uh, but I assume. It was made after the Shia LaBeouf stuff. Oh, um, like the FKA Twigs thing? Yeah, because if he quit that movie after that stuff came out, like, that's got to be, like, a real bad situation because he was, like, essentially canceled and... Blackballed to a degree, yeah, or, like, blacklisted. Oh, definitely not blackballed, blacklisted, yeah. yeah. I mean, like, yeah, he was essentially, like take him off a bunch of projects. I mean, he lost a bunch of projects and stuff like that. So uh, he's trying to get back in the game. So if he quit like a big production like this, that would be a, like we would speak to what a disaster it is. But uh, the uh, Olivia Wilde has been like, kind of like maybe lying about uh, kicking or kicking him off the the project because she wanted to protect her actors. Um, And then this week, we're probably missing some too, but like this week, the big one was. I mean, earlier, hey. legitimately earlier in the day. So for, for work, we were going to talk about like the latest crazy stuff with uh, with Don't Worry Darling. So they had everything planned, and then 
by the time we went to do it, enough other crazy shit had happened just over the course of like eight hours. Because earlier in the day, yesterday, the big news was that Olivia Wilde was asked like, yo, what the fuck is up with this thing? Why like Florence Pugh isn't here? What's your relationship with Florence Pugh? And she was trying to fan the flames, but she did it yeah. in such a way that was like, all right, so there is clearly an issue there. Right. She is she is not uh she has not really helped herself much with PR throughout this whole process. Oh, huge time. And that's that's like not even considering the fact that like uh she got Maybe caught in a lie with Shia LaBeouf. Right. Like, fortunately even for before her, before that, it was like, "Ooh, what's going on here?" Fortunately for her, nobody had enough time to focus on that because eight seconds later, potentially, Harry Styles spit on Chris Pine. Which, I mean, from the video, it it's hard to see spit, like actual projectile spit. But like the way that his mouth moves and the reaction from Chris Pine, it's the reaction for it's, me. It's the immediate reaction. Like not even like that was not even a people were talking about like, oh, man, they, are they drumming this stuff up? Like, there's no way that this could possibly all this shit could possibly be happening. Like, are they doing this for publicity? Listen, that was so immediate that it could not have been faked. That's kind of what I think, too. And I, I think that and I mean, if. If Olivia Wilde is convincing uh, Chris Pine, A-list leading man in Hollywood, that like, hey, of, of horrible get, bosses too, fame. You need to get spit on in a public forum, and you can't do anything about it. And by the way, you're gonna get spit on by a lesser actor who happens to be my boyfriend. And he agreed to do that for the sake of the film. Yeah. She should win some sort of leadership award and like best director because like, holy shit, you have to have incredible pitch skills to tell somebody that that's a good idea. Or that check must be absolutely right. insane. Uh, so I don't I don't subscribe to the fact that like this was staged or fake. I both sides have come out and denied that he stood Dude, on it. But like, what are you going to do? One of the headlines, the things on the right on Twitter, <laughs> man, we could do. There should be a podcast that's just called Things on the Right on Twitter. And you talk, uh, although that sounds like it's talking about like Politics. MAGA people. Yeah. But like the right side of Twitter, those headlines, the trending, what, whatever it is, every single one of them is always like, what? What the <laughs> fuck are you talking about? And the one, one of them today was like, no, Harry Styles did not spit on Chris Pine. So I was like, how the fuck do you know? And I clicked on it, and it was like, representatives for both <laughs> actors said that did not happen. So I think we can put that to bed. And I'm like, is, is there a journalist anywhere here? What the, like, did, did somebody publish that and actually take it as, so, yeah, they said it didn't happen. Duh. <laughs> All done. Bye-bye. What are you doing? Yeah, I, uh, I don't particularly care if he spit on him or not. Like, if, if that happened... That's juicy as hell, and also like, I'm I'm down for like more actors to to spit on each so other in a public court. Yeah, so it's better than Will Smith slapping the fuck out of Chris Rock. I did think about that, and I, I made a jokey little tweet last. It was no, it was a sincere tweet. I was like, "Hey, Harry Styles, you're not that guy, pal. You're not spitting on Chris Pine. Like, who the fuck you? Like, I, oh, he absolutely can spit on Chris Pine. The examples I he use can spit on me too." I was. Uh, did you do that tweet? I did do it. Uh, I was going to get to. I forgot to check whether or not you did the tweet. But I think if there's any sort of like ruse, if there's any like this was all a ploy to do whatever, I think it was a. Uh, this whole movie has been a setup to get every Twitter user to tweet. I'll tell you who Harry Styles can spit on. <laughs> You're looking at him, pal. <laughs> That's Talk right. About I, me. And I did that tweet, and then I followed up with the only controversy here is that Chris Pine didn't say thank you. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> at least you dressed it. I mean, the, so did you see everybody did that tweet? No, because I I was like I was like a day late. Oh, all right. Then I like that. Then yeah. I, I think I'm gonna do that tweet. Now. <laughs> <laughs> I like I logged on Tuesday morning after the long weekend catching up on the news, and I was like, ooh, nobody's got this one before. Spit? How about on me? <laughs> I think I, I'm not going to do it now because I'm too busy uh, playing drops, but I think I am going to fire that tweet off later. I do like that, I, like, all the celebs now, when they get in fights and uh, are not caring for each other, they're just doing, like, really kinky shit. Mm. Like uh, Will Smith just slapping Chris Rock. Yeah. Slapping and spitting. That's uh, that's in vogue now. 
And that's what sucks. Like, because I, I, again, I was thinking of like, who can spit on Chris Pine? Where <laughs> my takeaway will be. <laughs> I love the Word. idea of doing it. All right. I thought now, about making this whole episode. Who can spit on Chris Pine, Who is dude? allowed to spit on Chris Pine? I mean, we have time. Hold on. I'm going to bang out a quick read, and then we, like... Let's get to it. We... <laughs> All right. Oh, my goodness. Listen, fantasy football season is right around the corner. Famously. Has fantasy football season begun? Not really. Uh, I would say it has because uh, most people have drafted. Yeah, that is true. Well, if you if you draft like a day or two before the season starts, it's coward shit. That is cowardly. And it, yeah, we do that with my league where we've now moved it to keepers being due like the day before the draft. And I'm like, no, fuck that. Mm -hmm. Make keepers... A week before the draft. Yeah. And if somebody gets hurt, I get to say, nice keeper, loser. That guy's hurt, you dummy. Our uh, our league did a pretty cool thing this year, which is uh, you can have one keeper uh, from last year's team, uh, but you have to surrender your first round pick and you don't find out who is being who is a keeper until the draft is locked. Wait, so you so you just choose yes or no, I will use a keeper, and then randomly one of your players is kept? No, no, no. You choose who you want to keep, okay. but the rest of the league does oh. not find out. I was like, th I would never do that. So I got Derrick Henry in the first round with, like, the sixth pick. Yeah, because awesome. Because, like, the person, like, the four people, in, or the five people in front of me all had keepers. But they didn't know they were going to have the first overall pick? Yeah. Wow, I like that move. You know what other move I like? Turning the page from summer to fall, leaving some of those summer favorites behind. You know, you bring in the what, what's my what, what's the thing I always say? I say out with uh, out with the old, in with the new. Mm -hmm. Famously, that's credited to you. It's my expression. You know, trade those sandals for some boots. Can't wait to start wearing boots again. No one lets me do those in the summer. You replace Sunday brunch with maybe some Sunday tailgating. Well, summer's over, folks, and it's time for something fresh during this season of change. While you make the transition, do what I'm doing right now. Grab some Vizzy Seltzer with flavors for every vibe. Yeah, Whether you're cozying up. You're on video. I, I'm holding one. I was earlier. We'll add it in post. We're going we're gonna to play. We'll, we'll show previous stuff. from. That Who sounds cares? awesome, Sonny. What am I, a jerk? <laughs> And that's where we learned you can do two drops at once. <laughs> Look, whether you're cozying up for cuffing season or hosting a tailgate, they'll be the envy of the lot. Pass the vibe check with a case of bold, delicious Vizzy Seltzer. Vizzy Mimosa has the refreshing taste of real orange juice and is perfect for daytime sipping. Comes in strawberry orange, pineapple orange, peach orange, and pomegranate orange. I won't lie to you, Pete. I was at breakfast the other day, and there were so many options for mimosas, and I was like, you know what? I would legitimately rather have a Vizzy mimosa than a real ass mimosa right now. It's lighter. Of course. I can chug five million of them. I can just go to town. If you like to shake things up or just keep your options open, try a Vizzy variety pack for a cornucopia. That's a fall term, famously, of flavors. <laughs> variety pack one got strawberry kiwi, blueberry palm, black cherry L, and pineapple mang. Variety pack two, W straub, raspberry tangy. Papaya Pashi and Blueberry Lemon. Vizzy Hard Seltzer. Flavors for every vibe. Stock up on Vizzy Hard Seltzer and show some love for the show. Here's how to get yours. You go to VizzyHardSeltzer.com slash washed. Is SuckMyDick.com <laughs> And to hear first about flavor drops and more, go to VizzyHardSeltzer.com slash subscribe. You must be 21. Yeah, or man. older. Yes, right. You don't you have don't to be have only to be, 21. Famously, you do not have to be 21. All right, so the examples I used for who can spit on Chris Pine, mm -hmm. just off the top of my head, were Mahershala Ali. Mm -hmm. I'm not batting an eye there. No, can also spit on me. Ryan Go... <laughs> Give me half a mind to do the tweet right now. <laughs> the other one's Ryan Gosling. Those were really like the two obvious ones where I'm like, if the headline is... 
Gosling spits on Chris Pine. I'd be like, ah, I like that. That's a power move. Although, honestly, even if Gosling spit on Chris Pine, I'd be like, that's... Is Chris Pine maybe better than Gosling? Has he... Does he think that? Why is he spitting on Chris Pine? He shouldn't be worried about Chris Pine, but the fact that he is worried about him makes me think, maybe he should be worried about him. Hmm. I'm going to throw in... Um I would like to throw in one of the uh, one of the Chris's, one of the famous Chris's, Chris since, Pine. S- since we had uh, like the fucking horrible Chris debate that lasted for six years. Like, who's the best Chris in Hollywood? I forgot we did that. Yeah, like that that existed on Twitter for like six straight years, and it was fucking infuriating. So I just did. I forgot we did that, and I thought you were talking about like it was a brunch thing, and I was like, oh, cool, yeah, we definitely did that. No, like it was a Twitter thing. It okay, was like, you got you got to. Keep one. Oh, or whatever. right. Hemsworth. Pratt, which hilariously has aged hilariously, hilariously because I think most people would just like immediately give up Chris Pratt at this point. Why are people so mean to Chris Pratt? Because he's like, because he's not Christian? doing the stuff that he's good at. Okay. I, 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 people paint him as like a really bad guy. Maybe I'd well, have to look it up, but I'm like, I don't think he's a bad guy. Probably I don't, not. I don't know. Knows? Like the, the, the Anna Ferris situation was a little sketchy. Where like he dumped Anna Ferris and then like was dating the Schwarzenegger uh, daughter like a week later. Ah, and that's then uh, got huge Olivia Rodrigo song vibes. Mm-hmm. And then uh, he also just like is doing action movies now. Yeah, don't don't. Who He's... decided that Chris Pratt was going to be a fucking action star? Yeah, I mean, like you're right. I haven't seen Chris Pratt in anything I've loved for. Since Parks and Rec. Yeah, Parks and Rec was really good, though. He was awesome in Parks and Pratt Rec. Chris Pratt did a great job in that. Like, the the Parks and Rec bloopers with Chris Pratt are, like, the fucking best comedy ever. I got someone who I want spitting on Chris Pine. Who? John Travolta. <laughs> I don't think he's... I don't think I don't think that's allowed. So I, I, the, and here's what he would do. It's got to be the same setting. Venice Film Festival. He <laughs> spits on him, and then... Plops into his chair. Does like a, <laughs> ah. did 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 you, were you the one that said like uh when you shook hands with John? Did you shake hands with John Travolta? And he was wet. Oh yeah, he wasn't wet. I thought you said he was wet. His hand. Oh, it was fishy. His hand felt like a <laughs> when you get a fish at the store. <laughs> And there's just like a bag of water, but there's a fish inside. That's what John Travolta's hand was like. <laughs> that uh, he he does not dis- he does not get to spit on Chris Pine because I don't I, that dis- spit has got to be disgusting. Not with that hand. Oh, I was a like, dude. It was a bad hand, and he, it was it was the coolest thing Travolta I'd ever sp- done. Travolta spits on Chris Pratt, uh, Chris Pine, Pine, just by spitting in his hand and then he just like wipes him hand. down. Yeah, dude. If it weren't for the hand being weird. Because I, I went into that handshake doing some, like, boss shit. I was walking, was crossing him in the hall, and I just said, Hiya, John Travolta. And he stuck out his hand. Neither of us were breaking stride. And he was just like, How are you? <laughs> he said he was say, trying to say, How are you? But he was John Travolta. Mm-hmm. And, man, that hand that's sucked. Also, that's also why he can't spit on Chris Pine, because I think that he, like, physically cannot spit on Chris Pine. He would try, and it would just dribble down his chin. Yeah. As long as he still plops into the chair. <laughs> okay, fair. I really want to see John he Travolta plops plop into the and... chair, and there's, like, a splash. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah. All of the water from his hand just squirts out. There's a fish in there that's been dead for... Very, very long. How do we feel about uh, George Clooney? Is George Clooney allowed to spit on Chris Pine? George Clooney. I could see George Clooney like not even wanting to look at Chris Pine, though. Some like real Don Draper. I don't think about you yeah, at all. Yeah, that's like, fair. Like, I don't think, I don't think George Clooney would. I could see George Clooney giving Chris Pine his car keys <laughs> as though he is a valet driver. I I could see that as well. Do you think uh what about Take it ben easy Affleck? with her. Actually, you know what? I don't care. I have so many. And then he gives him a hundred dollars. I could see George Clooney giving Chris Pine a hundred dollars right to his fucking As face. A tip. <laughs> yeah. Uh Ben Affleck. I think Ben Affleck can spit on whoever he wants. Yeah. I bet that Ben Affleck doesn't spit, though. I bet he does. And I'm I'm not talking like sexually or no, whatever. No, I mean I like, not, like 
I, he smoked cigarettes. Like, oh the, yeah, true. Like this, like seventy percent of people that smoke cigarettes spit a lot. Yeah, and twenty five percent of the rest of the people who aren't lying. Do you ever spit? If like no one's around, like no, You're gonna spit on the street or something? No. Okay, yeah, me neither. Yeah, it's gross. Yeah, I don't do that. So <laughs> we're in the five percent of people who say they never spit and, and are actually telling don't. the truth. Yeah. So the only time that I spit. But credit to us. I didn't say fucking ye when I say ye, you say ha. The only time I spit is when I brush my teeth. Yeah. I'm trying to think. If I weren't lying. Yeah, the only time I spit is when I brush my teeth. Mm -hmm. Credit to us for not making a, a, a inappropriate joke there. No. We're, or we're an adult podcast. Yeah, we're an adult contemporary podcast. That's right. We're adult contemporary. You can listen with your kids. What else are we talking about? Oh, wait, but hold on. Ooh. <laughs> Do you spit or... Do I spit or swim? Yeah. Swim? Do you swim? The trick is you, st you gotta say get an the SW yeah. word. Yeah. And they're like, but I... Spit or... Or wait, but you want a two syllable word. Mm -hmm. But actually, no, it does look like you're really forming two things. Yo, credit to me. Mm -hmm. Our friend of the podcast, Wayne, posted a picture of himself on stage. Yeah, singing. I did see that. He and said, guess what word I'm singing. said, guess what word I'm singing. And I fucking nailed it. This was a still picture. That's wild. Dude. Good for you. I almost reposted with like... <laughs> I'm At the best. some point, we got to give me my flowers for <laughs> just like this ear or like what whatever I've, got. I, I I've got everything musically except for musical talent. It's it's the only thing musically that's not in my musical repertoire. We've heard Vineyard Nights. There's some musical talent there. There's like, I'll tell you what though. You hear some like, so if you knew about this, like the the Wayne Picture Gate thing, mm -hmm. you're like, oh, and he makes music. I bet he's some sort of like real doctor of music. And then you hear it, you'd be like. I was expecting I was expecting something different. <laughs> I mean, that's that may as well just be your brand. It's just I'm expecting something yeah, different. Yeah, I was expecting something different. But getting not back for to, better, not for worse. Getting back to the, uh, a true one thousand the, the a one thousand true fans thing. We have like three hundred yeah. true fans, but then you got to split that up between the two of us. They also did say they were like, if if you're doing content in as part of like a band or whatever, the thing of like one thousand true fans doesn't really work because you got to expand it for multiple people. But I'm like, oh, no. What if you're just like a keep the lights on podcast? Yeah. I mean, also, we've got some we've got some things in the works that yeah. could get us more we, fans. Yeah. Especially maybe like, even only fans. Ooh. Yeah. Watch out for the only fans drop from brunch. What if I made an only fans that was exclusively me doing things that I think I already do too much of? <laughs> I would like to see it. I will play drops for an hour <laughs> straight. I will live live stream me stringing a guitar. Oh yeah, I am uh, performing at Idle Hands. I will be playing music at Idle Hands. Hell yeah, in, uh, as, as part of the the partnership that we have with Idle Hands. Very cool. They said, "Hey, you want to play music sometime here, whenever you want." And I said, "Deal." And they said, "Okay," and then I said. So I'm gonna get my friend Dave Lefkin, and Dave Lefkin, man, great made musician, one of, one of my favorite songs of this year. So we're going to play. Once I locked into this deal, I didn't tell them what I had up my sleeve. They should always know. If you're not seeing, if you're not seeing the tat, you always want to see the tat with me, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. Because if you don't see the tat, you got something up this. Sleeve. I could have something up my sleeve theoretically. Yeah. If you see the tattoo, famously, Nothing my sleeves. <laughs> This is stupid. Because we're using this thing, we're and we're plugged into headphones. I'm hearing us as though we're like listening to a podcast. And you're like, oh, this is terrible. So this is like, no, like that, I actually think it's really, really. Why do good. You people listen to this? No, I, I think it's incredible. Like that, that, that nothing up your sleeve thing was really, really funny. I think. Anyway, I was like, so yeah, I can play here. Sweet. Me and my friend Dave are going to play Ween covers. 
Hell yeah. For like two hours. So it's great. I got uh, I got one of the fucking things that attaches to the mic stand so you could put your phone on it. Mm-hmm. You ever see, People that are playing acoustic guitars always have that thing going. Yeah, I see that with a lot of tablets. Oh, right, right. Yeah. And I, I thought about getting an iPad mini for it, but I was like, nah, keep it concealed. So anyway, that's going to be September 22nd, the night after you can also see us at performing at the leader bank pavilion where we'll be performing as fans of father john misty (laughs) while josh tillman and co perform that's the night after yes september 22nd is idle hands music fun oh okay yeah I, i thought you were playing at idle hands uh oktoberfest Different, oh. different thing. No, no, no. Okay. I, I'll be playing. I'll be playing the dunk tank. Which, okay, fair enough. I don't know if that'll go. Man, Idle Hands getting some real play in this episode. You see, Miles got some real play on Barstool. I did. Yeah, I saw that he uh, did the toy for the uh, the betting show. Yes, uh, Dan show. commissioned him to make a toy. Technically, Rico commissioned him, and Dan paid for it. Oh, okay. because that was uh, that was a uh, a subject of contention when they discussed it. Oh, right. And Dan clarified, yes. like, well, like it was on my card. Yes. And they were like, well, you get a company card. Yeah. Uh, anyway, I have no idea what that show even was, but it was it's Dan. Just a, it's just a betting show. It's just they make picks. Okay, sweet. Uh, Miles, by the way, is killing you right now with the toys. And he just made Jerry Seinfeld, who is the new drip king. <laughs> Jerry Seinfeld just living his best life what as that for? Jeff Goldblum. Uh, it's uh, some... I don't even even know if it was like a fashion brand or a magazine, something that began with a K. I forget what it was. Kith. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like Eartha. It's like a uh, Michael. Santa baby. It's like uh, Michael Tyson trying to pronounce Kiss. Ah, Kith. Like him singing a a Thiel song. Yeah. You gonna watch that? Uh, <laughs> Did you get what I'm saying? Yeah, Seal. Yeah. Uh, are you gonna watch Kith the- from a <laughs> Kith Kith from a Roth? Yeah. Are you gonna watch? Famously, a Roth is rice in some spanish-speaking countries true yeah barcelona barcelona did you you i can't remember did you see pop star no he does a song like that because he's taken with it Mm -hmm. and when he's explaining it he's like for example you would say like spain (laughs) which is absolutely not how that works uh are you gonna watch the uh the michael tyson show on hulu a bunch yeah cool no i don't know who cares uh maybe are you I don't know. I don't know why I asked that because I didn't have an answer. You know, what I don't really care about your answer. It, it's it just very seemed clear like that, something to say. Yeah, it's very clear that uh, the the rundown for this show, and we've been having some pretty strong rundowns of late. The rundown for this show was absolutely roadcaster. Look, I, I I I think I know how to use this. the The title of this episode is just going to be "Elephant in the Room," and the elephant in the room is the roadcaster. <laughs>